Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today we are checking out Robocraft X. Now this falls under the category of games used to create games. It's very much still under development, but it's along the lines of, say, Google's Game Builder, where you go in and you gotta create game worlds. And coming with the next release, which is coming any day now, you're gonna be able to share those worlds with other people. So it's a game about building games. Uh, another reason why we we're covering it is because uh, if you get it now, before October, the next week, basically, uh, you can have it for free. It's going to be renamed. You know, you may have noticed on the title graphic, I called it GameCraft. And here it's Robocraft X. And that's because it is being rebranded as part of the launch. And when that happens, it's also going to get a price tag. But as long as you buy Robocraft X before that date, we'll get back to the details in a second. Uh, but if you buy it before that date, so if you go and grab it in Steam right now for free, it remains free for you going forward. Uh, I'm also covering it because my brain is a marshmallow because of this head cold, which kind of explains why I sound so weird and this doesn't require a ton of brain power for me to do a video on so without further ado let us jump in we're going to first take a look at how it looks uh, how creative mode works then we're going to jump into um, some of the other examples other people have then we'll go and look at the steam page and again that deal i was talking about that's on right now uh, if you just want to fast forward play with this at a later date just head on over to steam grab robocraft x add it to your uh, library and worry about it later because you've got about a week to deal with things all right so here we are we're going to head into creative mode and as you can see here you can kind of set these worlds up you can uh, create different uh, controls. These are electrical switches that run off of these batteries that control these creations that you create. And we've got a number of them going on. Right now we are in maker mode. Uh, so you can see the icons across the bottom. Each one corresponds to a hotkey. So for example, if I press the one, I can go ahead and create aluminum cubes. If I hold down the left mouse button, I can create a number of them. And then once I release, I can create them upwards like so. And that's how you create things. If you want, you can right click to delete something and it will get rid of the whole darn thing like so. So that is kind of the premise. You go around, you create um, stuff, and then you can link it together. You've got a number of things like gears and wheels and activators and so on. You're only seeing a bit of them right now. Let's hit the Q key. We'll bring up the full inventory, and you'll see the kind of stuff you got to work with. You got a number of joints, uh, pistons, hinges, and so on. Uh, now, what is lacking is the level of programmability that I would like to see, but coming in the 10 release, you're going to get more. So right now, you just have things like splayer um, spawn points, um, and then you're creating using conductivity, you connect batteries up to um, devices that create your world. We'll see that in action when we look at what somebody else created. So that's it in the, um, the game creation mode. So I'm just going to, oops, uh, I guess I hit Q again to get rid of that. So here you can see the environment. So push E. Well, you'll notice the top right corner, E is how you test your game. So you press E and then you see, so we've got this being run by a, a a hinge or a piston or a gear of some kind. Over here, we've got a number of different controls. So these guys, we got two guys and pivots that are being run by this battery over here. We got this one with the switch. So I can flip the switch to off. I think it changes the rotation angle. Here we have another switch and you'll see how it interacts there. This switch, I'm not actually sure what that one does, but you can control how things are handled. Three, four, and five is the channel that that particularly operates on. Um, so you'll see over here, three, is being controlled right there. Fives are being controlled by the five. I think four is going to be over here. So yeah, there you can see the fours being right there. And then you can do simple things like now we can go back here and flip said switches and we kind of can virtually control this hand. So come here and flip that up. And then we can go this way. Or if we want, we can flip it down and have it go the opposite direction. Uh, we can curl our hand like so. And then this guy is our thumb, like so. So you can create basically robots uh, using this system. Uh, and then over here, we've actually got a vehicle you can jump on and test out. Oh, da -da -da. So you got standard WAS controls, except for some reason, shift is crouch and control is run, which makes zero sense to me. But here we've got a car. It's run by a sequence of batteries. It's got controls on the wheels that are being run by motors. You can sort of see it right there. And we've got the left and the right we can run. So here we are, we just turn the right wheel up to full and we can turn the left wheel down. We'll do a spin in place here. And then we can do the opposite and then we can get the heck off of this vehicle and watch it spin out of control in our world. So there you go. That's the kind of stuff you can go ahead and create. Uh, at any time you can come back here and drop things into your world and then you can basically share things out that you have created. Speaking of sharing, let's just jump out of here and we'll go over to some of the community games. Now this is some of the functionality that is going to be coming very shortly in terms of you being able to share your own game. Well, here you can see we've got some of the examples they've got going on. Let's go over here and take a look. So we've got, here we'll go Josh's Fortress. And this kind of is a 
see if you can get to the end obstacle course. And you can actually go in and modify and create things as you wish. I'm gonna go ahead and do an E and run it. Um, so here, control held down. You're gonna need that to get over this. So this obstacle is on a spinning. So there, oh, I suck. But there you see, it's kind of a created an obstacle course. This guy has, it's like basically virtual wipeout. And you're just trying to get through to the end. Now right now there aren't end states like you would expect in a game like this. Um, so when you actually get to the end, let me just go ahead and run here. By the way, that whole uh, shift not being run, but shift being duck is very, very irritating. So you see some of the things controlling the scene underneath here. Uh, there is where you would get to the end. It causes when you run over it, the end thing will fall down. But um, there's nothing at this point that the game then sends you to a new scene or anything. But we'll get to how that works in just a second. So in a nutshell, that's Robocraft X. It's, it's nothing really, really advanced as of yet, but as you can see down here, it's still pre-alpha at this point in time. But you can get the premise of what it is going for. Like I mentioned earlier on, um, the closest uh, analogy I can think of is uh, Game Builder from Google. Uh, very similar concept. And of course, Minecraft, which is kind of the inspiration for all of this stuff. Uh, you can find here on the Steam store. Uh, it's available here. I, of course, link this in the linked article down below. Um, you can grab it right now. It is completely free to play. But as mentioned, it is being switched to being called Gamecraft. Uh, and let's go look at that news. So here, um, on, so here are the details. October the 24th. So I'm doing this video on October the 16th. So you have... Wow, even that math's hard for me with my brain right now. Eight days. You have eight days as of right now. Basically, if you add it to your account, it is yours forever. So when it becomes GameCraft, it is completely free. Uh, otherwise, there is going to be a price tag. The price tag's pretty small. I think it's like five bucks or something. But what we're going to get in the next release is full self-publishing. So you can actually share your games with other people and you can um, rate and download and share other people's stuff. You're getting new blocks, things like text blocks and so on. So as this kind of stuff happens, the power of the games you can create are going to get uh, more and more capable. So you can see here rich text. So you can do markups and change the fonts and sizes and so on. And then here's where kind of the key is. You're going to get console blocks. And this is basically going to be the scripting language version. Um, so you'll be able to do things like trigger a teleport, um, and so on, you can use the console blocks to do that. And then we are also getting triggering. Um, and you can add to your games, which can trigger when object or characters enter them. So this is where you're gonna start getting stuff like, um, you know, the ability to end your game, to switch between things, to add some complex um, logic to it. Uh, we're getting a number of new controls being added, the slider, the dial, the three-way switch, the button and the toggle switch, um, advanced scaling system, and so on. They've also mentioned of a preview branch. Coincidentally, if you want to grab that preview branch, and it is completely different. So you can come in here, uh, you can go, so this is, uh, you go to Robocraft X in your uh, project in Steam, uh, go to betas and just type in freedom is key, like so, and do a check code. And I'll say that code is correct. The for private beta is available. And then you can jump into the preview version. Now the preview version is going to become the real version in something like eight days. So unless you really want to not wait for it, but you can come in here, basically it's freedom is key and then switch it over to uh, the preview version. We'll close that out. And then Steam's going to do a download. It's 400 megabytes. So uh, it should be done almost immediately. I'll just let that finish. Um, and then you'll notice when you actually run the game. All right, it's updated. Let me just go launch it now. So you're gonna also notice something here. This is um, obviously a Unity powered project. Uh, you can recognize that one immediately. Go ahead and launch that in. Now, another thing I should probably point out is that there's no sound in this video. That's just because I've turned it off. There is sound in everything I am doing. I just have it muted for, for the recording. So you can hear my uh, lovely nasally voice today instead. So here we are loading into the loader. And you're gonna see this version, the preview version is a bit different. One of the reasons why I didn't showcase the preview version immediately is when you go into preview games, there are very few options there. And then when you go into craft games, you're getting a kind of a slightly different interface, um, like so. And you've got kind of a different world, got a skybox, blank world to work with. And this whole thing, so you've got, they've renamed it a lot of things. Uh, they've got some new switches in here. Uh, they've got things like rocks, so you can create, you know, worlds that are a little bit more natural and less blocky. Um, and this is actually all getting a facelift and an overhaul as well. So it's going to give you a, a better display so you don't have to mouse over to figure out what the, the physics of things are. Now, the cool thing here is when you do start dealing with some of this stuff, like rubber, rubber will cause you to bounce. Each one of these things will have so oiled an oiled surface. Let me just go ahead and create one. 
So, well, that's not what I meant to do. Actually, you know what? That'll work quite well. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, you'll work. All right, so there, I'm gonna do an E of test to my game. And when I jump on this guy, slick, and I keep sliding. So that's what oil will do. So I've got my key held down, and you're also seeing the sheen on it. So key held down, I've let go, and I'm sliding. I let go, and I'm sliding. So there are there is physics on everything you're dealing with. And in some of the examples, the physics actually are, are pretty powerful. So if you put, there's one with a scale. If you put too much weight on the scale, the scale will actually break, and so on. And actually, they've just converted it to being using um, Unity's Dots physics engine on the back end to make it um, scale better, perform better, and more accurate. And so that, I think, is going to be coming uh, when they do the rebranding over to the... Um, uh, Gamecraft name as opposed to uh, what they're using now. But as you can see, there is this preview. This one, again, is powered by Unity Dots, which is kind of interesting. And really, that's about it. It's one of those things, just jump in, play around with it. It doesn't require a hell of a lot of explanation. That's the entire idea behind it. You're not going to be creating the next major game. This is one of those things that you can grab and play with, you know, and share your work with friends, get a community going once that functionality from the full release is out there. But over time, when they add more and more logic to it, it could be a nice introduction to programming for a kid in your world or a nice way to uh, waste a few hours when your brain doesn't work for other programming tasks like myself. All right, so that is it. That is uh, Robocraft X, soon to be called Gamecraft. Once again, if you grab it before October the 24th on Steam, uh, it will remain free. Otherwise, it's going to have like a $5 price tag going forward, but who knows what that will turn into in time. And I actually have to make a suggestion. If you are a developer, don't ever price your game at 5 bucks. It's a terrible price point. Um, people are, you have a certain segment that are not going to pay any money for a game, but once you get into a segment that will pay money for a game, um, they will look at $5 and say, okay, this is trash. So there is a reason why um, the most successful price point for eBooks on uh, Amazon is $15, not like five or 10, because people just naturally assume that something that's only that much money is garbage, and, and that's a mistake. So if you're going to charge money, once you put that paywall in front of people, you are turning off probably 80% of the potential, 90% of the potential audience. But of that remaining 10%, people that are willing to pay money are willing to pay more money and are probably less likely to buy a product at $5 than they would be at 20. So uh, just my top tip to anyone out there looking to price your game. I've done some a fair bit of research in the subject and it seems like a low ball price point is just a terrible idea. Hell, even just price it at 20 bucks and then sell it 75% off on every Steam sale like everyone else does. All right, that's it. That is uh, Gamecraft slash Robocraft X. Let me know what you think and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.